As mentioned several times throughout this unit, water makes up a large percentage of the human body. It plays an important role in a number of ways within the body. The first is that it acts as a solvent. So it allows for the various things found within our body to actually be dissolved within it so that it can then be moved around the body or be involved in reactions. That being said, water sometimes acts as a reactant itself. So it's part of the various chemical reactions that go on in our body not just in the sense of dissolving the fluid, as mentioned before, when it acts as a solvent, but actually as one of the reactants that then undergoes chemical changes and is formed into new chemicals. It's involved in temperature control. And so we discuss this when we discuss the skin and the role it plays with evaporation in terms of perspiration and cooling the body. It's involved in transportation because lymphatic fluid, blood plasma, as well as just the fluid found between and within cells allows for the chemicals that are within our body to be moved around or allows for cells to actually move around in the case of blood. It also acts as a lubricant. So we've talked about various membranes that allow for the reduction of friction that there's mucus which is made up mostly of water, and that mucus acts as a lubricant, reducing friction. Water and the dissolved electrolytes are distributed into two major compartments within the body. The first is the intracellular fluids. This accounts for 63% of the water in the body. Intra is referring to inside, and cellular referring to cells. So this is ultimately fluid found within all the cells of our body, making up the 63% of all of our water. Extracellular fluid makes up the remaining 37% of fluid. Extra meaning outside and cellular again referring to the cell. So these are all fluids found outside of cells. This fluid can be further broken down into subcategories of areas where the fluid is found. Water located between cells within tissues is called interstitial fluid. Plasma is referring to blood plasma. And then an amount found in lymph. And finally, transcellular fluid. This is extracellular fluid including categories like cerebrospinal fluid and the aqueous and vitreous humors in the eyes. The synovial fluid found in joints and the serous fluids that we've discussed being found in body cavities. So now let's discuss water balance. Water balance is referring to the fact that the intake of water in our bodies needs to be equal to the output of water from our bodies. As we can see here, the normal intake is 2.5 liters or 2,500 milliliters, and our normal output on a daily basis is 2.5 liters or 2,500 milliliters. But there are various ways that we actually take in and release water. Let's start by taking a look at intake. 1.5 liters of water that we bring into our body is through water gained in beverages. Another 30% of water is gained by eating moist foods and getting the water that is found within them. A final 10% is through water gain from metabolism. Earlier in the course, we learned about water being a waste product ultimately from cellular metabolism, and about 10% of our water comes from this process. Our output of 2.5 liters, 1.5 liters of that is water lost in urine. 28% of it is water lost through the skin and also water vapor loss through the lungs as mentioned earlier in the unit. Finally, 12% is water loss through feces as well as through sweat. Ultimately, as mentioned earlier, the balance is found that our intake is equal to our output and we should know these major ways that we ultimately gain or lose water. One important reason to maintain water balance is because, as we mentioned, water 
acts as a solvent for the various chemicals within our body. And so let's take a look at some of those chemicals, namely the electrolytes found within the water portion of our body. One of the major electrolytes, as we've seen throughout this course, is sodium. Its function is that it's the major extracellular cation, so found outside of cells. It regulates extracellular volume because water is attracted towards sodium. And as we've seen in the nervous system unit, it participates in nerve and muscular functions. Potassium is the major intracellular cation found on the inside of cells. Again, it participates in nerve and muscular function as we looked at earlier in the course. Calcium helps to strengthen bones and teeth, is also involved in muscle contraction, and helps blood clotting. All of these are important electrolytes within the body and are found dissolved in water within the body. Another electrolyte, this time a negative anion, is chloride. It's a major extracellular anion and is involved in extracellular volume control along with sodium. And finally we have bicarbonate, HCO3, with a 1 minus charge. This is part of the bicarbonate buffer system and participates in acid-base balance that we've looked at previously in this course. But because we're talking about the urinary system, another main function of the urinary system is to maintain the body's pH. We've looked at pH previously. Blood pH wants to maintain at a 7.35 to 7.45 range. There are three main systems involved in this regulation of pH. The first is buffers within the blood. The second are the lungs. And we've previously looked at this reaction of carbon dioxide reacting with water in the blood, forming carbonic acid, and then breaking down into hydrogen ions and bicarbonate ions. A third system for the regulation of pH that we've mentioned previously is the kidney, the urinary system. And the kidney play a major role in the regulation of pH in two ways. The first is that the kidney causes chemical reactions between free hydrogen ions in the blood such that they are converted to other chemicals that can then be excreted in the urine that is formed through the kidney. Another function that the kidneys play in regulation of pH is to retain as much bicarbonate ions as possible, making sure that they're not urinated off when they can be maintained within the body in order to buffer any acid or basic changes that go on in the body. In order to maintain the appropriate amount of water in our body, our body has the sense of thirst, such that when the volume of water drops in our body, our body becomes thirsty and we seek out water. So how does this work? It actually involves a region that we've looked at earlier in the course. So within the diencephalon, we have the hypothalamus. The hypothalamus plays a major role in the body's homeostasis. And the hypothalamus has sensory receptors for the concentration of our blood. As the concentration of our blood becomes higher and higher because we have less and less water, the hypothalamus has chemical receptors that, once they sense that concentration change within our blood, cause us to seek out water. Give us senses like experiencing dry mouth, such that we feel like we need water and then seek it out. In this way, our hypothalamus controls our sense of thirst and allows for us to maintain homeostasis because it indicates to us that we need an increase in our water intake. 